Hello, it is Thursday, May 25th, 2023. I'm Chris Remond. Welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Thursday puzzle today, so we could have some kind of tricky or intricate or involved theme. And this potentially tricky or intricate or involved edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by David Innes, Josh Lucas, Bradley Pirtle, and, as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark, the indomitable Shoalmaster, and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the six of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support. They are sustaining this channel, keeping this series going. For that, I am very grateful. So thank you if you are among the patrons. And if you'd like to become among the patrons, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video. There you will find all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date. And as a benefactor, you also get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug. So again, thank you to everybody who has backed the channel at any point at any level. I really do appreciate it. And uh, do also subscribe to the channel if you've not remembered to do so yet, or if not uh, charitably not remembered to, maybe you just forgot. Um, that uh, helps helps if you subscribe to the channel, helps YouTube promote it um, accordingly. And then you can also join the Daily Solve Discord chat server. There's a link in the description field uh, to that as well. Nice, friendly chat community. All right, let's get on to today's crossword, this Thursday puzzle, a collaborative effort by Andrew Kingsley, for whom uh, this is around the 20th puzzle, and Garrett Chalfin, for whom I believe this is the second. Uh, it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And let's start solving, see what's in store. Oh. This is strange. Sorry, am I, yeah. This is a very, this is an extremely unusual grid. It's just not symmetrical. It's not symmetrical in any way. Um, most of it is. You see this T-shape, these three cell little black protrusions here. But these two, the one underneath my cursor here and the one here, these are not symmetrical rotationally with one another. And these little squiggles, these little sort of S's are, well, one's a sort of an S and one's a sort of a Z, but they're not, uh, some, you know, in other words, if you rotated the grid 180 degrees in an ordinary New York Times crossword, and in most of this grid, the black cells would match up. But in this case, these don't. This one is upside down relative to to what it should be to be symmetrical. So I wonder what that means. There's, still, there's some, just something off. There's just these two inconsistencies about the grid, and I wonder if that is relevant to the theme somehow. Anyway, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> more than a minute, we've not done anything. So wows probably ends with an S. Wows could be a noun or a verb. It's probably a verb. Um, yeah, it's probably a verb. You could say that's a big wow or those are some wows, but that's that sounds not great. I don't think that's the answer. International Day of Peace Month. Well, if it does start with an S, it's probably September. So dogs that can run up to 35 miles an hour. Oh, and that's being referenced by 35 down. Is that a revealer? So here we go. Certain soup ingredients or a homophonic hint to the answers to the starred clues. Oh, look. So our... Um, our, this I didn't even notice that when I was reading it. This uh, so when, when you see an asterisk in a clue, usually it means it's re related to the theme. Sometimes you just don't have those at all. Most of the time you don't have them at all in a, in a crossword. But when they are there, that's usually what it means. And we ha then similarly, often when you see a dash in a clue, it means one of two things. Either it means um, you know there's no information here, and you have to infer it based on some other property of the grid that's relevant to the theme. Uh, and off and then or and often this is the same thing. What it will mean is it's a continuation of the um, answer that you know would continue into it if not for the preceding black cell. So, so I'm guessing that means dogs that can run up to 35 miles an hour continues on here, and then similarly, 28 across would continue on to this. Um, but I don't know what any of these are. Anyway, now we're up to three minutes, and I've still done basically nothing. Food blank. Not sure. Exercise that incorporates ballet, yoga, 
and Pilates. Is it bar? I think bar might be might be that. Let's look at the downs. JPEG alternative, a bitmap. So a bitmap is an uncompressed image format, whereas JPEG is compressed. So the file sizes are smaller, but it's also not as high quality. Ciao, adios maybe, or adieu it could be as well. Maybe I'll leave that there. Show up again. Re oh, this is another one of yes, it starred. I have to remember that I, I often just don't remember to observe the asterisks. I have to remember those because I don't yet know how to solve them. All right, not well at all. Question marks, some kind of pun. Maybe the well is referring to a water well. I don't know. Flair could be Elan, sort of panache or, you know, zeal. Oh, here we have the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. Oh, I saw I actually remember that PV equals NRT. I mean, again, as I said, the last time the ideal gas law came up, I don't remember exactly how it works, but uh, I remember its existence from school. Okay. Oh, not well at all. Rare. Okay. It's not a water well. It's well done as in meat. If you're cooking a uh, steak or something, you could say, I don't want it done well at all. I want it rare, less cooked. This looks like tiara. Yes. It's fit for a queen is a tiara worn on her head. And to show up again it looks like reappear, doesn't it? Could this be pear? Oh, we have, so this, that would make two words, reap and pear. Is there any way that that's the answer? What did this say again? Certain soup ingredients or a homophonic hint to the answers to the starred clues. Um, I don't know what the certain soup ingredient is offhand. I mean, this looks okay, though. Let's check these crosses. Oh, here we have just another one of these. Electrical current converter. I'm not sure offhand. French 101 vowel. Sorry, sorry. French 101 word with three vowels. Probably O for water. E-A-O. That's three vowels, and that's a fairly common French word. Fabric for some formal table linens. And hit lightly. Bask in the light? I don't think that's right. Uh, chortles, yucks, so big laughs, big, big deep laughs. Um, electrical current converter. I should be able to just think of this, but can't seem to. All right, fabric for some unusual, oh, oh, damask maybe? I don't know. Not sure if that's right. Bond's debut film. Oh, Dr. No. Maybe it is that. Not too many. A few. Boom holder. Um, that's the other way around. I was thinking a, thinking a mic could be held by a boom pole, if you've ever seen those on a film set. But that's the other way around. That would be a, a mic holder is a boom. Oh, but a grip. A grip holds the mic on set, but... Uh, hit lightly. American charges. Um, I mean, it looks like it could be the word performs. I don't know why that would be relevant. I don't think it is. Uh, Here's another one of these. Country composed of over 7,000 islands, the Philippines. That's true of the Philippines. And then we have Philip and Pines. Okay, well, I mean, it's it's it worked in the sense that we have two sort of complete answers. We just don't know exactly how to get to them from the theme. At least I don't. You may at this point. Rundown. The rundown is, the re, is a recap, maybe? Oh, airfares. Oh, right. Okay. This is referring to American Airlines. Right. Okay. So airfares. There we go. As in um, your ticket, the cost of your ticket. Boom holders. I'm sorry, boom holder. Uh, oh, a mast. Oh, it's on a ship. It's on a ship. Okay. So the boom sail. Sailed by a mast. Okay. There we go. All right. And actually, that's relevant to the microphone sort of boom pole, because I, I assume 
that comes from the same concept, but I don't actually know if that's true. I, but I've always assumed it does. I could be wrong. Uh, hit lightly. Oh, tase or lay. Tase, you tase someone? So you sort of hitting them with light. Oh, no, lays, la la laser something or somebody, I guess, with a, with a light. Okay, there we go. All right, and here we have the electrical, oh, power supply. That's an electrical current converter. There we go. All right. Uh, Satya, uh, Satyajit raised the blank trilogy. I think this has come up actually in the crossword before it, I guess because it's three letters long and those are useful words in a crossword, but I actually don't remember what it is. Establishments for facials and waxing could be spas and chow looks like adios. Secretly unseal, perhaps. Uh, steam open. So you could steam open a letter and not leave evidence that you that you opened it. Uh, okay, so Satyajit raised the Apu trilogy. All right. I, I mean, I think I vaguely remember that from the last time I saw it in the puzzle, but uh, I think it must be right based on the crosses. I up and down to... Now, for some reason, when I saw this, I thought it was going to be very obvious, and then my brain didn't live up to that expectation. Uh, to, eye, to eye someone or something up and down is to... I mean, I guess you could caress them with your eyes. That feels a little bit loose. Um, I'm sure there's a, there's a more obvious one, and I'm just not thinking of it. Animal Crossing... Uh, let's see. Our treat. On us, you could just say. That works. Oh, assess. To assess something. To eye it up and down. There we go. To assess it. To give it an assessment. And Animal Crossing is still not clear to me. Bracketologists pick. Picks often. Does this mean someone who projects who's going to win a tournament or something, maybe? One seeds, maybe? You're picking the that team? That might be the answer. Let's look at the crosses. Food. Uh, I don't know. Dogs that can run up to 35 miles an hour. Oh, whippets. That's a dog. That's a, a fast dog. All right. Sort of those small greyhound looking dogs. And then we have whip and pets are, are both words. Um, hopefully not assembled in that manner usually and then carried out. Good or bad questioner. A good cop or bad cop is the you know, sort of TV or film trope. Food coma. You could, ah, food coma. You eat too much and you feel completely, you know, lethargic. Animal crossing a mutt. All right. Okay. So not a purebred animal, but a sort of cross of breeds is a, is a mutt. Like the fact that Lance Bass sang bass for NSYNC. Um, oh, apt, I suppose. It's an, it's right. He's aptly named because, uh, he sang bass. Lance Bass sang bass. Sorry, I assume it's pronounced. Those are pronounced that way. I assume his name is not actually Lance Bass. That would be too comical. But maybe it is. Well mannered sort. A lord could live in a manor, maybe. And um, of course, the question mark here because we're taking the phrase "well mannered" and we're actually not only changing the punny implication, but actually the spelling of "mannered" to look like a manor house. Jojo Rabbit setting. Oh, this was the um, Taika Waititi film. And I like his films, actually, but I never saw this one. Uh, where was it set? Wasn't it set in Germany? Uh, not sure. Pronoun heard in Hamlet and Richard II, appropriately. Is this one of these? No. Uh, I'm not sure. Appropriately. What's appropriate about Hamlet and Richard II? I'm not sure. Like much of Europe beginning in 1939, while at war, of course. And yippee, Yahoo, maybe? That looks reasonably plausible. Blank green balch or balk, American humanit humanitarian who won the 1946 Nobel Peace Prize. Interesting, I'm not sure I found. Wows. Oh, maybe this isn't Yahoo, but Wahoo, because you could wow somebody, you could awe them. And if you're not daring at all, you're tame. And Emil? G 
Gmail alternative, AOL. Yes, you could have an AOL email address. And if this is Emil, maybe not. Oh, Emily. Royal, oh, the royal we, right, okay. So um, the royal we, in other words, when a, um, I mean, associated with royalty, the idea of referring to oneself specifically as we. So, you know, we attended the opening ceremony today to mean I attended the opening ceremony today. Because of the usage of the phrase, the royal we in the Big Lebowski, which is used correctly in the Big Lebowski, because people, I think mainly because people heard it referenced in the Big Lebowski, a lot of people now just use the royal we just to say we as in several of us. Um, and then they say the royal we thinking it's a joke when they say it that way, but it, it's not the joke. <laughs> the joke is you're saying it to refer only to you specifically yourself. Um, that's, that's actually what that joke in that film is. Um, because the Lebowski character is trying to reframe the we to mean just him. Okay. Um, Jojo Rabbit setting, World War II. There we go. That makes sense. And, uh, why Europe was at war. Option at many bike shops. Uh... Oh, what about this? We never saw this. Peace in the game, Othello. Oh, right, that's sure. That game uses discs, white and black discs. Um, all right, option at many bike shops is a what? I'm not sure. Something right, obviously. Hip hop subgenre trap. Oh, somebody pointed out that the um, the rapper in uh, who was part of one of the theme answers in yesterday's puzzle was a a trap an early trap, I don't know, progenitor or, or a popularizer. All right. Uh, freestyle, maybe, oh, and appropriately enough, maybe freestyle rap here, hip hop subgenre. And then that crosses rap, freestyle rap. That could be the answer. Let's look at the cross allotment term each. Yes. You could allot something to various people and give them a certain number each option at many bike shops. You could have a test ride and certain soup ingredients, or a homophonic hint, right? Homophonic hint. This is our theme. Um, soup ingredients. Why can I not see what this is? Commonly torn tissue for short is a, the ACL, right? We have seen that a number of times. Oh, split peas. Oh, ah, we've, yes, okay. We've literally split up d doubles of the letter P. We've split P's. There we go. All right. So that means actually we can put, is it here? No. Where was it? Uh, here. We can put P's right in here. We know that they will go there. And this is lacking seriousness as an attitude. These P's are now throwing me off because now I'm trying to think of a word that starts with P and the next word that begins with P, but that's, that will end up being the case. But we want is a single word that means lacking seriousness. What is it? Oh, this is strange. Two I's in a row? No, really. Oh, it is correct. I insist. Yeah, okay. It's two words. Since that's over with, now then, what chests and waves may do. Heave. You could have heaving waves or you're, you could be heaving your chest because you're breathing heavily. Saxophone playing Muppet is, oh, who's the saxophone playing Muppet? That's annoying that I can't think. Geological span, an eon. So longer than an era generally. Oh, maybe, maybe not though, maybe it is an era. All oh, right, okay, I thought, with ge I thought with geology, we were talking about such broad spans of time that we would go to eon rather than era, but I guess not because from birth is natal. Oh, this is flippant, the lacking seriousness as an attitude. You could have a flippant attitude, lacking seriousness. And a saxophone, oh, oh, does Ernie play the saxophone? Oh, I didn't remember that. I can sort of picture it now that it's now that it's in my head, but I wouldn't have thought of it myself. Nike competitor, uh, Avia or Avia is a, it's a shoe brand. And a course goal is, uh, on a golf course, I guess you could be trying to shoot par, the requisite number of strokes or lower. In an obsolescent film format, uh, real. I don't know that I'd really call that a format. I mean, a reel is a unit of film. You'd have a reel of film. The format would be, I don't know, film or 35 millimeter film or something like that. 
which is stored on Rails. I don't know. Maybe the, maybe this is word is used in a way that is correct, and I'm just not aware of that usage. It could be brand of coolers and insulated drinkware. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll recognize it when I see it. Golden ratio symbol. Is it phi? I'm not sure. Like I'm never 100% certain of the, the Greek letter uh, kind of math usages. Some of them I am. Not all, certainly. Nickname for Letitia. Um, I don't know. Lisa or Lisa or something? I'm not sure. Glad rival. So Glad makes what kitchen goods? Who would be a rival of, of that? Writer Weasel, Ely, uh, Ely Weasel. Um, and then nickname for Letitia could be. All right, let's just solve other things. Religious scroll. A um, the Torah maybe. Glad rifle. Oh yeah, hefty. Okay, right. They make bags, glad bags, and hefty bags. Right. Okay. Yes, plastic sort of disposable bags. Uh, Tish. Oh, Letitia Tish. That sounds completely plausible. Yes. Should have thought of that, but didn't. Um, oh, Yeti. Yes. Okay. That's come up in the crossword before. And uh, someone mentioned in the um, uh, in the comments that it was a sort of high-end brand of, of these things, coolers and insulated drinkware. All right. So the golden ratio symbol is phi. Tap one's phone, perhaps, is... I don't know if it means tap as in, um, you know, uh, install a bug onto or tap as in to physically tap. Not sure. Staff, act as an usher for. Oh, see in. You could see someone into a theater, act as an usher for them. Chihuahua, for one, is a state in Mexico, also known as the namesake of a dog breed, of course, but I think in this case it's the state. A Syrian strongman Assad, famously from world events, and she in Sicily, uh, Essa is she in uh, Italian, and the National, National League expansion team of 1962. Is it the... the Jets or the Met, the Mets probably the Mets would fit. Staff, employees. Oh right, okay, there we go. So this is going to finish off the grid, hopefully. But let's look at the clues first. Oh, banned book of nineteen fifty five, Lolita. So that's the Nabokov novel, um, and then flattened in a way is ironed. Yeah, you could iron clothing, flatten it, and tap one's phone. Perhaps is pay. Oh, be I see. You're not tapping on your phone. You're tapping your phone to the um, contactless payment point. Yes, of course. Okay, so there we go. That was the Thursday crossword, and we had our nice split peas, uh, split peas theme. And of course, as is generally the case on Thursday, this is one where you don't necessarily need to understand the whole theme in order to fill these out in theory. I mean, you, 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 well, you do basically need to understand enough of it that the clues continue. You have to sort of either understand or infer what the dashes mean. And, um, and then you can sort of start filling these out, but then to really understand what's going on, you need the split P's and then see, ah, right. I see these are all words in which there are two consecutive P's and we're splitting them up. And once we've done so, they will still form complete words. So it's nicely constructed by Andrew Kingsley and uh, Garrett Chalfin. And I guess that's why the grid does this funny thing. I can't think of any thematic reason why the grid symmetry is being broken other than just to accommodate the words that needed to go into the grid. But it is unusual. It's a very strange looking grid for that reason. Yeah, I think it must have just been a sort of necessary to make the construction work. But I don't know. Let me know. Sometimes I miss these things. So if I'm missing a reason why there's a thematic, um, if there, why there's thematic relevance to the breaking of symmetry in the grid, please do let me know. I, I can't quite see why that would be the case, but 
I, I, I may well be missing something. In any case, if so, let me know in the comments. Of, and uh, let me know how you did with this puzzle in general. I'm always curious to know. Uh, and, and that's that for today's crossword and today's video. I'll be back, of course, tomorrow for the Friday puzzle when we dispense with a theme. No theme, probably no breaking of symmetry in the grid. Just, just solving often punny solving. We'll have to see. Anyway, join me for that. That's tomorrow on Friday. Until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Mm -hmm.